This isn't the story I expected to tell. I knew coming here that this isn't some magic beach where you can bring a shovel and scoop up buckets and buckets of Lego. It might have felt a bit like that 20 years ago, but uh, these days Lego is a little harder to find. But yes, here on the coast of Cornwall, in the southwest of England, when the conditions are right, you might find quite a bit of Lego scattered on Perranporth Beach. In 1997, a container ship called Tokyo Express was on its way to New York when it got hit by a heavy storm off Land's End, just west of here. A load of containers got knocked into the sea, and one of them contained almost five million little plastic pieces of Lego, most of which were ocean-themed. Flippers, spears, octopuses, all crashing around in the waves and currents. The far end of this beach has the right conditions. There's a huge expanse of sand, the wind's in the right direction, but the pieces can wash up anywhere. That's the nice, cute story that I was gonna tell. We find the Lego after high spring tides and winter storms, and that's when the waves will eat into the dunes and release a lot of the plastic that's been washed ashore many years ago. That's Tracy Williams. She's been beachcombing here for years and runs a photography project called Lego Lost at Sea. Uh, Tracy didn't want to be on camera, which is frankly sensible, but she was nice enough to show off some of her Lego collection, uh, to take me beachcombing here on the far end of the beach, and to chat about what she's found over the years. So I got my GoPro ready, we went out for a walk on the shore, and that's where the story I thought I was going to tell didn't work anymore. When you've got it in a little jar with all the bright <laughs> colours, it looks, it looks almost quaint and then the reality is a bit different. No, the reality is horrifying, isn't it? So if you look here, so... Absolutely full. So this is actually a plastic pebble. Plastic? Yeah. So How can you tell the difference? Feel the weight. Oh, huh. Nobody really knows where they're coming from, but they're thought to be the remains of beach bonfires. So I've actually picked up 20,000 of those. It's actually from an ale cask. These are from packaging strips. These are what they put around cartons to protect them from the packaging. Shotgun wads, shotgun cartridges, bottle caps. I mean, what, what do we do with it? Like, you've just got to bring a, a trash bag and just Yes, start... I normally come down armed with sacks. That's a glow stick from fishing. So that's the... Oh, yeah. Off a tyre. So these get discarded on garage forecourts and tyre places, and then they just get washed into the drains. And the drains go straight to the sea. A lot will be litter dropped on streets. 80% of litter dropped on streets is said to make its way to the sea. Wow. It's not just Lego. That's the way people like to tell it, but it's not just Lego. It's so many plastic things, and it's not just this beach. Once you start looking, immediately, bright yeah. white, bright blue, bright yellow. Yeah. If I was looking at this from a distance, I would have just read it all as seaweed. It's actually not as bad <laughs> today as it sometimes is. But I, I can't see how it's ever going to get better. In a way, it's a sort of pointless exercise, constantly picking it up. I've just kind of got a sort of creeping horror at this point. Do you, do you get used to that? Get used to seeing this amount of plastic? Yeah. Yeah. There's this cliche in horror movies where the characters suddenly realise that the monster that they've heard about, this abstract thing, is actually in the room with them and has been there the whole time. And that's kind of what this felt like, because I've been going to beaches like this all my life and I never noticed the bright colours that were right in front of me. So on this beach, you get a lot of the floating plastic. So you've got all the fragments of plastic. And you've got the nurdles, these little tiny... Nurdles. Those aren't stones, those are... No, these are, these are little plastic nurdles. These are the raw material that all plastic items are made from. There's billions of them. <laughs> so some are nurdles. You also get ones that are black and ridged, and they're actually biobeads that are used in wastewater treatment plants. And then you sort of pull back the camera and you realise that it's, it's all of this. There's so much of it. On some beaches, you get the plastic that sinks to the ocean floor and it washes ashore with the kelp, with the brown seaweed. They've probably been swirling around the seabed for the last 24 years. And every now and again, they wash ashore with the seaweed. And this goes down then? We assume it does. So a lot of it is, is buried under where we are yes. now. It just needs to come out. Quite a lot of the uh, toys we find, you can date them. And some date back to the 50s and 60s, especially the cereal packet toys. We recently did some experiments in the lab to see how long Lego would last in the marine or coastal environment. And the scientists that did the experiments worked out that it could last up to 1,300 years. I wonder if one day you'll just be able to recognise it by the colour. Yeah. The bright green of the seaweed or the, the yellow of the lifeboats. Oh, look, treasure. Treasure? Is that one of the dwarves from Snow White? 
It's not every beach, but it's a lot of them. Tucked away in corners where the tourists don't go, or just in plain sight, there was seaweed on another beach filled with plastic. Once you see it... I've just seen a Lego broom. Yes, just there? Yes. What do you know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Among all the other plastic waste, there still is Lego washing up. Did there used to be more Lego? Is it, has it changed over the years? Yes, I think there's definitely less Lego than there used to be. There's lots of people looking out for it now. You only ever see what floats, really. You never really hear about all the items from cargo spills that sink to the bottom of the sea. Because yeah. the rest of it is going to be out on the ocean floor somewhere. Yeah. That's bleak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a neat ending for the story. I was going to say, oh, if you're on the beach in southwest England, it's worth keeping your eyes down from time to time. Maybe you'll see some Lego. But even if you don't, maybe take a bag with you and take some plastic away. Because there's a lot of it. The Lego Lost at Sea project is on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and there's also a link to pre-order Tracy's book down in the description. <laughs> if, I look, uh, if I look slightly distracted uh, during that, it's because halfway through, I realised that there is... <laughs> green nylon rope, just in the seaweed, just hanging out there.